In this video today, I'm going to be showing you how to create a site or a sub-site on Glow. A site is essentially what Glow Group used to be. It's a website that you can fully personalize um, to help you with your teaching and learning in Glow. So, as you can see, I'm already logged in. I'm on the launchpad and I'm unified. First thing I'm going to click is School Site. When you're creating a sub-site, you have to think where you want your site to be based. Um, there is, to a certain extent, a hierarchy in Glow, um, because what it means is if I set my class site, so I'm going to create a class site today for my primary eights, um, so I'm going to create it under Erston Primary School, so that means that anything that's searched in Erston Primary School, it will appear for, well, show up the stuff that's also in my site. Um, whereas if I created it somewhere else, it wouldn't appear under Erston Primary. So, step one is to click on school site. Now what we want to go to is site contents. There's a chance that yours might not appear on the links. So if that's the case, you'll click on the cog at the top and then go down to site contents. We'll then see everything that is part of that site. And what you'll have to do is scroll down to where it says sub-sites. Here you'll see all the different sites. There are sub-sites to your site you're looking at. And be aware though there might be more, but you simply do not have permission to see them. So to create one, it's straightforward. You click new sub-site. Here we've got a basic form to fill out, so title, and go call it primary eight. A description. This is so if people search for it, it comes up and it tells it what it's actually about. So a site for the learners in the primary 8 class. URL name, that just has to be something to make it different. So I'm going to call it primary 8, don't worry too much about that. Here we've got the choice to choose which template to use. Team sites, the one that most of the sites I've created to be made out of. That comes with a one note notebook to use. It comes with a uh, news feed to allow discussion, interaction, a place to let people know things. And it comes with a document library for you to use. You've got the option to create a blog. And this is a blog held in Office 365. And there is also the blog feature in Go itself that uses WordPress. Um, the one in WordPress allows you to actually access it without being on Go. So it all depends on what you're using the blog feature. Community site, that's creating a forum. I will also point out that there are two custom tiles. So we have a class space, which is to host and promote learning for a whole class. Um, so that might be worthwhile having a little look at. We won't be doing that in this video though. And learning experience space, which the idea is that it's focusing on a specific area of learning. Um, so I'm going to choose collaboration and team site. We've then got the options of permissions. If we click use same permission as parent site, what that means is it means whoever is able to access the parent site, the place where you created this sub-site, will be the same people who can see your site now. Um, or you then also have the option to use unique permissions. So I'm going to click use unique permissions just so that I can explain what that actually looks like. Um, use top link bar for the parent site. If I click yes here, what that would mean is that all the links that were at the top of the parent site, so for me it was my primary school, they would appear on my sub-site. If I click no, I've got a whole set of links to myself. So, when I'm ready, I click create. And this might take a few seconds, depending on the quality of your internet connection. But when it does appear, it will come up and say permissions. And there is a chance that if you've got something wrong, this will be the point that it will tell you, no, this needs to be changed. That might be things such as a URL being the same as another URL, and um, so you might have to change little things like that. So, we have two, three categories here. We've got visitors to the site, so that means people who can only read what's on that site. You've got members of the site, so that's people who can actually contribute to it, and um, so upload documents, add documents, be part of discussions. And then you've actually got owners of the site. What owners can do is they can fully change the site, they can add different apps, different parts to it, and they can also change the look and such like. Um, so how it works is if I want to change who are all members of the site, I would click the little directory here to browse. 
what I then need to use is I need to use usernames to put in individuals, if I want individuals that is. Um, so how I would actually find those usernames is probably by, by going to my launchpad and looking at the management console itself and finding that child and that username. So that's one way of doing it. The other way that this Google feature uses is it does use school, school's seat numbers. So I can type in my school's seat number, 562, and when I click enter, it will offer me various different options of groups who I might want to have access to this site. So I can say, yep, I want teachers to be members, I want the pupils to be members, I want the non-teaching staff to be members. When I'm happy with all them, I click OK. You can also, if this is a very open site, and openness is obviously great because it allows people to cooperate with each other, and you can simply search for everyone. And what I'll mean is I mean all Google users, only people with Google usernames and passwords that is, can have access to that site. And, and that's how that works. When you're fully happy with that, all you'd click is click OK. And that is you now created your first site or subsite. So we've got some tiles here to help us to get started that we'll look at in the next video. We've got a news feed for discussion and we've got a documents library where we can upload things. Thank you for watching.